Hello and welcome to Into the Archives. My name is Katie Henson and I'm the curator of Greater Manchester Police Museum. So today we're going to have an in-depth look at one of the characters in our 1920s Thieves album. So I'd like you to meet John Keating. He is an electrical fitter and he's born in 1909, which makes him just 18 at the, when the offence took place. There's a great photo of him here to the left. Uh, now most of the entries in this book do have an image with them unless it's fallen out before it's gotten to us. As the photographs are in black and white, you have a supplementary description of the person to really bring it to life and so we know the eye colour, hair colour um, and complexion of our person. So John is described as having dark brown hair, brown eyes and a fresh complexion. He is shorter than teenagers today, just five foot four, but that's quite common. We would describe a lot of the people in this book as short which is just because of the malnourishment at the time. They just didn't get as much food um, and nutrition as we get today. Where it says marks underneath complexion, this is where any tattoos or scars will be recorded. And when I was first reading the document, I thought it said bears to the left and right side of his neck. It doesn't say bears. It says scars left and right side of the neck which shows how getting, why getting the transcription is so important and how it can be a little bit tricky when we're reading historical documents, depending on who's, um, who's written them and what sort of handwriting they have. If we move over to the right side of the page, so I'm just going to scroll across to the right now, we can see we've got the date of the offence, which is the 29th of March 1927, and what the offence was. So in this case, it's office breaking which is exactly like it sounds, he was caught breaking into an office. So moving across, we've got the sentence, which has got something filled in, and where he was tried, which is Salford. Now, he must have been found guilty because under sentence, it says two years, Borstal. Now, a Borstal institution were designed for people between the age of 16 and 21, um, the people they would have called juvenile adults at the time. So in this time period, in the 1920s, the minimum sentence in a Borstal institution was two years and the maximum was three. And they were designed to keep people out of prisons with an emphasis on discipline, education and training. They introduced in 1908 through the Prevention of Crimes Act through after trials at Bedford Prison in Bedford and Borstal Prison in Kent. Before they were introduced, offenders over the age of 16 would have gone to a standard prison with um, people much older than them, and younger offenders, younger offenders would have been sentenced to a reformatory or industrial schools. Even with the introduction of Borstal institutions, not every young offender would have been sent to one. A certain criteria had to be met first. For instance, the court had to be satisfied that the young person would benefit from the regime, and they also had to be proven to be habitual offenders who were um, friends with people who potentially get them into bad habits. They went through several sets of reforms throughout their use until they were officially disbanded in 1982 and replaced with youth custody centres or youth detention centres as they were later known. If we look quickly underneath, we have another John, so it's going to move us down. This John is John Williams, alias Jack Dawson, so that's an alternative name he went by. Now the reason I want to show you um, this John is because if we have a look at the date of the offence, it's exactly the same as John Keating's, and it's the same offence as well, office breaking. So I think we can assume that they were caught together, so they must have been committing the crime together. However, John Williams, when he's been sentenced, has been given three years at a Borstal institution, so he's been given the maximum sentence, unlucky for him, so we're not sure why either. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Into the Archives. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please do let us know. Or if there's any documents that you'd like to see us explore in later editions, also do tell us. We'd, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much and look out for our next episode coming out soon. Goodbye.